There's Daryl Perrin coming into the ring, 0 oh, and 1. And Roger, when you look at a guy like this coming into the ring, it's always that tough journey to the ring early on in your career. Well, for Daryl Perrin, it's a very interesting journey for this fight here for him tonight. It's just his second fight as professional. His first one came nearly five years ago. A crushing defeat. He had to take some time away. Decided if he had the passion or not, but he said he stayed in the gym and he decided now at uh, the age of 32, it's time for him to go for it or end his boxing career. Junmar Eamon set to come into the ring. And we saw him coming into the building, Brian, and he looked ready and willing to go in this opening bout. Oh, Jumar Eamon always comes. He always brings the pressure. Uh, he's a short guy. Obviously, he's not going to win a jabbing competition tonight. But what he wants to do is impose his will on Daryl Perrin, get to the inside, bang the body, and finish to the head. Roger, you look at the height difference between these two. How's that going to play out? Well, for Daryl Perrin, it should play out. I'm going to use my jab over and over again and not let this guy get in the inside because, as uh, Brian says, that's what he has to do, Iman, is get inside this tall giant. For Iman to be accessible, to be successful in this fight, Brian, he has to do what Roger says, and that's get inside. No, you're definitely right. I think we're in for a good fight, guys. That's the one thing with uh, Perrin he didn't do in his first professional fight. He was a taller fighter, and that one didn't use his jab enough, and uh, he was taken out by Tibor Broch. If you don't use your, your advantages to your advantage, you can certainly come back to hit you. Let's go back to Thomas Driver in the ring. His opponent across the ring, fighting tonight out of the red corner. He's wearing black trunks trimmed in red and weighed in at 153 and three quarter pounds. Coming to us from Toronto, Ontario. Tonight, he is making his professional boxing debut. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Shunmar Iman. Here, above that's a good blow. That's close there now, is gentlemen. no doubt about it. We do have a definite height advantage here. <laughs> Absolutely. It's whether he can take advantage of that and keep Eamon out of his way. There's a look at the difference in height and weight coming into this. Six one to five foot five. I guess it's going to come down to who's going to impose their will more. Is the taller boxer going to use his jab and keep Eamon away? Or is Eamon going to get to the inside and bang away? Roger, knowing the layoff of Perrin, you got to wonder how the early rounds are going to play such an important role for him. Well, just to get that rust out is one thing, but he said it's a feeling of redemption. He feels fantastic. You do what you want to do in life. That's what he told his three kids before tonight's fight. So he's showing them, do what you want to do in life. Eamon packs him into a corner. Perrin works his way out back to the middle of the ring, comes over top of the right. 
drops the combination. Eamon trying to get back inside. Heron on the back pedal. Goes back to the ropes and Eamon just keeps pushing forward, Brian. Yeah, so far it doesn't seem like Perrin wants to really move around. He's bringing the fight right to Eamon, so kind of a surprise. I thought he might try to box and move, but he's making a real fight of this and trying to take it to Eamon. You know, he, he has been in the ring as a professional before, so maybe, you know, he's going to use that to his advantage. A little experience he does have over Eamon. I think maybe that first loss and then the five-year layoff, he's coming back tonight saying, this is my opportunity, I'm going to take it. you got to believe, though, being in the gym and being live in the ring in front of these many people has to be a huge difference for him. Yeah, for sure. Uh, both these guys, you know, even though Perrin's had uh, the advantage as a pro, Eamon's had 57 amateur fights compared to Perrin's 30, so really the experience kind of evens itself out when you think about it that way. Perrin tries to come underneath. Eamon goes over top. Eamon trying to work it back. Heron again moving to the outside. The left hook has so far been successful, guys. Yeah, it seems at the end of every combination, as Perrin lifts up to back out, Eamon's hitting him with that left hook. He's timing it quite nicely. Look for that to be a factor down the stretch. Perrin tries to come over top with the right. He connects, pushes Eamon against the ropes. And they'll clinch against the ropes. The referee's going to step in and break this one up. Perrin's got to be able, Roger, to start following that jab. He's throwing the left, but he's backing away after connecting. I agree. I was going to ask Brian that same question. He's coming, instead of a straight right, he's doing a big loopy one. Should he, he just straighten things up? He is kind of looping it. I'd like to see him throwing more of a solid uppercut. Jab, jab, right uppercut as Eamon steps to him. But he seems to have his own ideas right now. And we'll see, uh, you know, see how this fight plays out in the next few minutes. Because as... Uh, as we mentioned before, Eamon is finding a left hook, and there it is again. And there is that big left hook as he catches Perrin again on the side of the jaw. The reason why that, that left hook is successful, if you watch the feet of Jumar Eamon, he's got great balance and uh, stableness on his feet to land that counter left hook, and it's landing with some power. The end of the first round. There's Eamon heading off into his corner. I think the pace of that fight, the pace of the first round was a good pace, but as I'm looking at the two wearing it in the first round, I see Perrin fading a little bit, and Jumar is going to be coming on stronger in this fight. Roger, it looks like Jumar is not better prepared, but more willing to go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Well, that's what he has to do, because uh, he is the uh, has the, the reach disadvantage, as we mentioned, but he's been able to get in the inside here, as we can see. Perrin not using that jab maybe enough. He's able to keep him outside, but as soon as he comes with that looping right, we talked about it, Brian, Eamon's able to step in, and he not only connects with the left, but he's able to double it up sometimes. I, what I like about what Daryl's doing early on is bringing the fight right to uh, Jumar Eamon. I thought Eamon would be pushing Daryl back, but Darren seems to be standing in there and giving all he's taken. Sometimes you get the big, tall fighter, and they will use that left jab and dance around, bicycle around the ring, just keep the shorter guy to the outside, win, try to win the fight on the jab. But, yeah, I'm happy to see Daryl come out here. He came to fight, not just to try to be a tactician in the ring. I remember Daryl as an amateur, and he did like to get in and work the body. He wasn't afraid to mix it up. So, you know, he's got guts. And if you did see the fight with Tibor, he, he hung in there. Tibor, Tibor had the experience on him and sort of took it to him in the last couple rounds. But... Daryl hung right in there and uh, fought his heart out. So, you know, look, look for him to be up. Well, there you go. There's yeah, Daryl's first about to give the prop. Even sent up to the corner. That's right. He came over with that top right again. That's right. He's, he's really bringing the powerful hooks in there early on in this fight. It's only a four-rounder, so a knockdown early can be, uh, you know, the deciding factor in a fight. Heron comes with the uppercut twice in a row and gets Eamon on the back pedal. Aaron again with the right. Eamon trying to get inside and tie him up. Even from where he is sitting on the ropes over here, I'd like to see him circle into the right, Daryl Perrin, and just utilize in the middle of the boxing ring. He seems to be easily backed up onto the ropes is where somewhere he does not want to be. And another big right hand by Eamon. Eamon just coming on pressure. strong. A couple of big rights and left. Perrin against the ropes. Eamon throwing from the heels right now, not backpedaling at all. Pitting Perrin against the ropes. 
Smart, smart move by Perrin there to hold on, try to grab him. No need to stand against the ropes and take the punishment. He but seems. Eamon comes right back at him. Knowing he's got blood in him, he's got the, the sight. He knows that he's got him down and he's got to just hammer away. He's a little younger, he's a little fresher, and he seems to be a little more hungry at this point. Uh, I had dinner with Daryl tonight before this fight. He seemed confident. He's such a nice kid. You know, I'm hoping uh, hoping he can turn this fight around and keep it even through the stretch. I think the fans would really enjoy that as an opener, but he seems to be in a lot of trouble right now, and I think it's only a matter of time. Eamon's rocking with big right hands. Comes up with the left underneath. Heron trying to battle back off the ropes. There's Heron. that uppercut I was looking for. Just missed, but it could be a big, big punch for Perrin if he can put it together. Roger, connecting on that punch, does he have to be a little more setting it up? He can't Whoa, just big right point. hand by Perrin. Turns the fight around a little bit in his favor. And he I think Jamar even may have tired himself out here. Eamon just standing on the ropes now. They're going back and forth. Eamon throws a couple of balls. Now he steps in with some uppercuts. Heron hangs on to it. They tie up in the middle of the ring. Both men holding their hands low now. And a big right hand by Perrin. This is what I like to see in an opening bout. For guys that have never been down here to the Hershey Center to see professional boxing before, they don't know what they're missing. The excitement is incredible in here. What a round of boxing, good gentlemen. Good job. And Eamon with the punch after the round connected, and that was a heck of a big round for both fighters, Roger. Yeah, you see the momentum turning twice in the round. Excellent. You thought maybe Jumar was going to stop Daryl over here on the ropes. Daryl ends a big right hand. Jumar retreats to the ropes, and Daryl puts the pressure on. What a round. Yeah, Eamon said before the fight, I'm going to take him out. I asked him his boxing style. I go forward, and that's what he does. Daryl Perrin knows he needs to use the jab, but he has shown what what size of a heart he has, and that's a big one. He took a lot of punishment, about three straight right hands there against the ropes, but then he comes back with those of his own, and he finishes the round strong. There's the big right hand by Perrin, right there. And that's the one that keeps Eamon on the ropes, and Perrin just kept throwing from then, and seconds before that, it was Eamon with the advantage at the other ropes on the other side of the ring. Oh, we, we've said it already, this fight is back and forth. I still might have given the second round to Eamon from the from the early pressure, but Daryl really turned it around in the in the latter parts of that round. So who knows what's in store for this third round? And a big right hand by Jumar Eamon to open it up and a left hook. The only way he's going to counter that is Heron has to get that left out there and keep Eamon backpedaling. He seems to be looping that right hand, as you said before. Uh, is Daryl Perrin, and I think if he threw that right hand straight, he might keep a little more distance between himself and uh, Jumar Eamon. Eamon backs up Perrin on the ropes. They turn positions, head back to the middle ring. Over the top, Eamon comes again. Again, Perrin backed into the corner. Eamon wearing the black trunks trimmed in red and silver. Heron in red, trimmed in white. Eamon able to dance out of the way. Heron wildly throwing that right hand. And again, off the break, able to connect with that overhand right. It seems tonight, this third round here, you can see both men fading a little bit. They don't have the, that gas that they had in the first round. And that's what you'll see from up-and-coming fighters, guys making their debuts, first, second fight. They seem to come out fast. The excitement, the nerves, they tire out pretty easily in the early going of fights. And Roger, We're seeing that a bit here, but the action is still pretty intense. Roger, all of a sudden, that, that initial burst of energy you have coming to the ring is gone. Yeah, it is. Well, you got the crowd here. You're excited. Uh, redemption for Daryl Perrin. And then, well, when you start throwing 30, 40 punches, and then you take another 10 or 20, it, it takes something out again. That's what we're, we're seeing right now. But uh, Daryl Perrin, he There's that came right in with, the, cut. with a decent strategy. He thinks he can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Eamon. And he seems to have found a hole in Eamon connecting with that right uppercut. Well, what, what I see so far is that Daryl Perrin has taken Jumar Eamon's best shot, and he seems to be coming right back with his own. So, interesting contest. Eamon keeps throwing. Perrin pushes the shoulder down, trying to work him back to the middle of the ring, give himself some room. Takes that left. 
Eamon oh, connects again. Excellent Pushes work to the body and the head. Eamon's got a flurry going. I think Perrin's in trouble, ladies Perrin and gentlemen. Is backpedaling. Eamon goes for the bomb and just misses. This time he's over the top. Connects with the right. Perrin stays on his feet. Oh, it's Big looking to me like Perrin's in a world of trouble, guys. He can't keep the hands up, and that's dangerous with Eamon throwing those lefts and rights over top of Perrin's gloves. Well, Brian, there's no shame in holding on, is there? No, absolutely not. This is professional boxing, especially when you get to the 10-round fights where you need to pick it up, slow it down, turn on the pressure, turn off the pressure, pace yourself. They're learning. They're in the early part of their career, and I think they're handling themselves well in there. You spoke about the excitement a little bit earlier of the first fight. I remember being in my first fight and smiling while the referee was giving us our final instructions, <laughs> just being so excited in there. And I could see that in Jumar Eamon. He really came out like a ball of fire, didn't he? Now we're in the third round. It's gone by the wayside, Roger. It's the fourth and final round. Where are they going to summon the gas now that, you know, Brian talked about it. They threw their big flurries in the first two rounds. Well, now is where you find out about their training camp and their conditioning. They know it's the fourth round, so if there's anything left in the tank, they're going to empty it. Just the uh, style we saw in the first round. So I, I expect this four, fourth and final round to be a toe-to-toe -to -toe battle. Eamon connecting left and right over the top. Perrin's hand just started dropping from the midway point of that round. Uh, he's definitely had Perrin. Fight fans, let's there. He's two combatants on. Shot. But just like the Tibor Brock fight, this guy, Daryl Perrin, he comes to fight, and he's, he's, you know, he's a hard guy to finish off. We talked about it right off the top. We expected Perrin to use his size to his advantage and dance a little bit, make Eamon work to get to the inside, but he's been a bully. He stood right in the middle with Eamon toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Maybe not the best strategy, but you have to admire his heart for doing that. I definitely do, and I think this crowd here tonight will appreciate that. It's pretty hard to criticize a boxer that wants to fight. I've heard people say that when you're in the boxing ring, there really is no loser. Unfortunately, there will be a winner tonight, but both these two are gallant warriors. You can see the action slowing down. A little clinch here helps you out a little bit in the later rounds of a fight, and especially action, in your debut. When the action slows down like this, Roger, oh, a any big kind right of flurry hand. could give you a round. Oh, certainly. Yeah, it is a close fight. Probably Eamon is ahead. So I would say this is around Perrin has to win, and he can't be taking punches like that if he wants to win this fourth Oh, round. nice Absolutely. right hand by Perrin, though. Yeah. Perrin, every time he takes a punch to his credit, he's coming back with one of his own. Now they're stuck on the ropes. You can see the zip seems the to be gone out of uh, Jumar's punches, but he's still throwing them. Jumar tries to go down low and back over top. That's been so successful in the early first two rounds. He seems to have found a home for that body, body, and the up, right uppercut up the middle on Perrin. Daryl Perrin now has Jumar Eamon against the ropes. Like Roger pointed out, Perrin would dearly love to get this fourth round. I would love to see Perrin from the outside, from out there throwing the hard one too, right there. But you see, he'll lean in to get close to uh, Jumar Eamon. I'm not sure what, what that is in his strategy, but I'd like to see him working more from the outside. And as we saw there, it gives Jumar a chance to work off the ropes and turn the tide. Uh, definitely, I think he's playing right into uh, Jumar Eamon's game plan, yeah. and it's showing in here. Well, give Jumar credit though. He's having a great fight here if he goes forward. And he hasn't taken a back step this entire fight. He just nope. keeps bringing it. Even as an amateur, he fought at my gym a few times in Orangeville. And uh, he never takes a backward step. He's fought some of my fighters. And some. He, he's won on three occasions best fight of the night against my guys. So, you know, a guy like that who has, you know, There's a big this kind of back from Eamon. Backpedaling is Perrin. And they move to the middle of the ring. It's a good Eamon finish here. Over the top. Perrin sucks that one up as well and keeps moving. I like what I'm seeing from Jumar Eamon in a professional debut. He wasn't too successful as an amateur, but you can tell by his size, it, he's not going to be a successful amateur boxer. But he's looking good in his pro debut, guys. What do you think? And when you're not successful as an amateur, it just means that it's a different style of boxing. Totally, totally. And not only different style, different scoring system. In amateur boxing, you can titty tap, pity pat, and score points. Here, you win the round or you don't. Jumar Eamon. Let's just call him a man that just perpetually threw punches for that whole fourth round. Yeah, he came forward. 
you know, he, he was like a tornado in there today. And uh, I want to give credit to Daryl Perrin. He really stood in there, gave as he took. It was a great fight. I really enjoyed that as an opener. What do you think, guys? Think yeah, absolutely. Got, think the crowd got their money's worth in belt one? That first yeah. fight of the night can set the crowd's tone. And, Roger, you know what? What a doozy we had. Oh, yeah, that's a good word for it. Doozy and Daryl Perrin. We'll see. He probably won't get the decision here tonight, but he had his three children, 13 years of age, nine years of age, and 10 months old. He can go home and be a proud papa tonight because uh, he showed great heart and determination here. And uh, Jumar Eamon, as you see right there, a great pro debut. Uh, bull in the ring. And hopefully for Daryl Perrin, it's not five years before his next professional fight, Brian. Now, you guys spoke about that earlier. I spoke with Daryl today, this afternoon, as we we're, uh, you know, after the weigh-ins. And what he said was he took some time off. He started a family. He's got a business going. He's got a good career. He's got a wife got a family and you know he took a little time off but he thought he still had something to give to the boxing game and if nothing else guys he came in here hey. and put on a heck of a performance he put on a heck of a performance for everybody seated here in the hershey center but jumar eman like you said roger probably will get the decision here on my card i do have him ahead i don't know how about you guys i got the belt scored 40 36 for jumar eman but you know a shutout doesn't necessarily warrant you know the kind of kind of fight it was no, because absolutely. it was a good fight it sure was the many occasion for daryl perrin that he was able to battle back took a couple of big punches and everything that eman threw at him and came back with some flurries of his own some huge uppercuts as well yeah no he he did take some uh, clean shots from jumar eman he was knocked down the one time i thought maybe there was a bit of a slip as well but he certainly did take uh take a hard punch so i think the knockdown was the uh, the right call there but uh, no you're looking at uh, Daryl Perrin from Hamilton, and Hamilton can be proud of his performance tonight. And Toronto should be proud of Jumar Eman because uh, he brought it here tonight. This is what you people pay money to uh, come and see. They don't necessarily come and wa want to watch boxers dance around the ring. They want to see him go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, and that's what we just saw. Yeah, this isn't, uh, we're not talking about the old 14, 15 rounders. This is four rounds, and they know they got to let it all hang out. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, a knockdown early. If Perrin was to get knocked down in the first and then the second round's close, and he comes back and beats uh, Jumar Eamon in the third and the fourth. It's still a draw, even though he come back and won the latter part of the fight, which I think is the most important part of the fight. But in a four-rounder, a knockdown can be the deciding factor. But I don't think it is tonight. I think uh, Jumar Eamon deserved the win. I think he scored a shutout, and we'll see, uh, you know, we'll see what the judges have to say. Yep, waiting for the judges to hand the scoring. Both fighters now in the middle of the ring. Let's go to the ring and Thomas Driver. Ladies and gentlemen, after four rounds of boxing, we go to the judges' scorecards. Judge William Boudou scores it 39 to 37. And both judges, Kelly Zolnircek and Alan Davis, are in agreement, scoring it exactly the same, 40 to 35. All in favor of your winner by unanimous decision and successful here tonight in his professional boxing debut, Jumar Eman. Not totally unexpected. Jumar Eman with the unanimous decision and you go. And ladies and gentlemen, how about Will a big round of applause for the judges at 40-35. I forgot Eamon, to score the knockdown yeah. in that, but Eamon, Eamon four really rounds did zero. just carry the fight though. Yeah, no, it was a great fight. I was really impressed. Neither neither uh, Daryl Perrin, he, he, he deserves to keep his head up. That was a great performance. Really, really gutsy. Just like his fight with Tibor Brosh. Roger, we take a look at the highlights and Eamon just kept coming. He was like a bulldozer making Perrin backpedal more often than not. Well, that was his game plan to go forward, and uh, Daryl Perrin maybe didn't use that uh, left jab enough. He let uh, he let Eamon come in and go toe to toe with him, but uh, give uh, Daryl Perrin credit as well because he he did land some big punches himself. But in the end, Eamon was just uh, a little too much for Perrin on this night. Yeah, Eamon's got a good uh, good corner going there. Uh, he's got some experience in there with Richard Suse. He actually fought Hector Camacho Sr. Joey Gamach, he's been around a little bit. He, uh, he, was, he was quite a good professional. I believe he was Canadian welterweight champion at one time. Real slick boxer. I did lots of rounds with him as a, 
when I first turned professional, and he was a great guy. Taught me a lot about the game. You and he's doing the same thing with his fighter, Jumar Eamon. Yeah, I fought uh, Camacho Jr. on short notice. 24 hours notice, but put on a good fight. 